Morning guys. Today we're going to take a look at page four of the unit five classwork packet and we're going to look at the section that says classifying triangles in the coordinate plane. Now previously you'll recall that we learned how to classify triangles according to angles, acute, right, obtuse, or if all the angles are the same, equiangular, okay? And we also learned how to classify triangles according to sides, namely scalene if no sides are the same, isosceles if at least two sides are the same, or equilateral if all three sides are the same. What we're going to look at now is kind of like an extension of that where you are going to have to graph the triangles in the coordinate plane and in order to determine if any sides are the same you're actually going to have to find out how long each side is. And the way we're going to do that is by using our trusty old friend the Pythagorean theorem from unit one. Let's take a look together at example number 21. Once again, we're on page four of the unit five classic packet, and I wanna take a look at example 21. All right, so first things first, let's grab this thing. So we've got negative seven, negative seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, then we've got, um, what does that say? Is that negative nine comma one? I think so. So negative nine comma one, and then negative one, negative one, which is right here. All right, cool. All right, guys. So thus far, we have successfully, I hope, graphed our triangle in the xy coordinate plane. But in order to be able to determine if it's scalene, isosceles, or uh, equilateral, we need to be able to draw our right triangles in the corners and then use the Pythagorean theorem three times. Okay, so let's do that now. There's one triangle. There's a second triangle. And there is our third triangle, right? Remember, the reason we have to draw all these right triangles is because all three sides of this triangle are slanted. None of them, unfortunately, are vertical or horizontal, so I can't just count them, right? Okay, so let's uh, determine how long these sides of the triangles are, shall we? From one down to negative seven, that's eight units. From uh, negative seven over to, I'm sorry, from negative nine over to negative seven is two units. From uh, negative seven to negative one, I believe is six units. From negative seven to negative one is six units. From negative one up to positive one is two units. And from negative nine to negative one is eight units. Alrighty, so with that being said, let's take a look at our trusty old friend, the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so over here, I know that I'm gonna have six squared plus six squared equals c squared. 36 plus 36 means 72 equals c squared and rad 72 equals c. If you're one of those adventurous individuals who likes to simplify your radicals, by all means, the biggest perfect square that goes into 72 is actually 36. And um, what is rad 36 but six, right? So in this case, that's six rad two. Now notice something nice that happens here, guys. Do you see how this triangle has the same numbers as this one? What that means is that when I do the Pythagorean theorem, guess what's gonna happen? Yeah, I'm gonna actually have the same exact triangle which means that the sides are the same length, okay? And so just to show you how that would work, eight squared plus two squared equals C squared. 64 plus four equals C squared. Combining like terms, taking the square root of both sides. And of course, it's not one that you would actually necessarily know, but this does have the perfect square factor, right four, and rod 17, so technically that's two rod 17. 
Now, let me just clarify something here. Technically speaking, you don't actually have to do the entire Pythagorean theorem in order to be able to classify. Technically, all you need to do is draw the triangles and check to see if they have the same numbers. That being said, though, on a unit test, the way that this would be assessed is they'd probably ask you first, find the perimeter. And then as a follow-up question, they would ask you to classify the triangle according to sides. So if they ask you to find the perimeter, this is 6 rad 2, this is 2 rad 17, and this over here is also 2 rad 17. So my perimeter would be as follows. 6 rad 2 plus 2 rad 17 plus 2 rad 17. And notice that when I, well, normally when I ask you guys to enter answers on the computer, I do ask you to combine like terms. So if I had two red 17s and I had two more, how many red 17s do I have in total? I have four of them. So my final answer then would be six red two plus four red 17. But then the follow-up question would be classify this triangle according to sides. Well, because only two sides were congruent, I would say that this is an isosceles triangle. So let's go back and let's summarize. If the question asks me to classify a triangle that's uh, graphed on the coordinate plane, what I need to do is I need to check the lengths of the sides. The way I'm going to do that is by going back to unit one and using a squared plus b squared equals c squared, also known as the Pythagorean theorem. If I find that all three sides are the same, equilateral. If only two sides are the same, isosceles. And if it turns out that all the sides are completely different and they give you random radicals, uh, that would be scaling.